Good evening, families, distinguished guests, and members of the class of 2022, and welcome to the 144th Douglas High School commencement. I'm Josh Romano, the principal of Douglas High School. I'll be your MC for tonight. Will you please stand, if you are able, for the national anthem as performed by class of 2022 graduate Savannah Brito, who will be studying biology on a pre-med track at Siena College in New York. It is customary during the national anthem to face the flag, which is located behind you. Remove your hats, except for the graduates, and place your right hand over your heart. Or 
Thank you, Savannah. The members of the class of 2022 wanted to take a moment to remember their classmate, Delaney Crapo, who sadly passed away last year. Please join the class in a moment of silence as they remember Delaney for the wonderful, creative, funny, and kind young woman that she was. Thank you very much. Graduates, you may be seated. Sorry, I messed that up on you. Stand up. <laughs> we practice that so much. Will you please welcome Class Vice President Kaylee Bolin, who will be attending UConn in the fall to study political science. Welcome friends, family, faculty, staff, and community members to celebrate the class of 2022. We downloaded every countdown app we could find, drew tally marks on the board, and fought desperately to overcome the senioritis we developed during freshman year. Counting down the days, months, and even seconds until we would walk across the stage and be recognized for our years of hard work and dedication. Now that our countdowns have reached zero, I am proud to look out at my fellow peers and commemorate all that we have persevered through together. I believe that I can speak for many of my classmates today when I say that no matter when, at some point in our academic careers, we have been asked the question, what did you learn at school today? To which many of us shrugged and gave an exasperated sigh in an I don't know. Even if we did not believe it at the time, this response was far from accurate. Sitting in class, many of us have pondered when we will need to calculate the velocity of a particle, recall the quadratic formula, or differentiate between the various treaties of Paris in our lives beyond high school. Even if our futures don't require us to know this, we are leaving DHS with far more than an education solely from a textbook. It is now evident that no matter what path we all choose to follow in life, the experiences that we have shared at Douglas High School have been a beginning for us all. Our class, many times, has faced shortcomings and unfortunate events together. When we first walked through the main entrance of our school, we were lost, literally lost. We didn't know where any of our classes were. But as soon as we formed routines and learned our way around, we lived through a historical experience, the Great Flood of 2018. For those of you who do not know, at the beginning of our freshman year, the entire English wing was flooded due to a burst pipe in one of the science labs. Due to renovations, we were forced to alter our daily lives and find new strategies to get to class on time. This is one of the most valuable lessons DHS has taught us that we can never could have gotten from a book. The importance of being able to adapt. Being faced with adversity is how we learn to overcome and grow. Instead of just focusing on the inconvenient or annoying aspects of the flood, we quickly came to realize that no matter how much we complained, nothing was changing anytime soon. We were forced to adapt and make the best out of an inconvenient situation. Having debates in the foreign language fishbowl with Mrs. Mayo about if Jonas from The Giver lived or died at the end of the book, he lived by the way, or forgetting something in your locker and having to take a 10 minute detour to retrieve it are seemingly small occurrences that the flood provided for us. All of the challenges we have faced during our time at the school, whether academically, socially, or emotionally, have helped us define the people we are today and hopefully have helped shape our morals so that we continue to grow as the years go on. Douglas is a school that no, not only teaches its students core academics, but provides us with meaningful interactions and thought-provoking provo incidents. Visual discussions, witnessing Mrs. Fitz flipping a desk to teach us about the dangers of mob mentality, or hearing about Dr. Romano's dating life, have been staple <laughs> events in our learning atmosphere. <laughs> our friends, families, peers, teachers, and mentors have become our support groups from whom we have determined limitations, found motivation, and defined our individuality. Douglas is a perfectly imperfect school with perfectly imperfect people that have molded us into the fine young adults we have grown to become. Even though our countdown app shows zeros on the screen, our next journey is about to begin. Not all of us will take the same path, 
but we will all take the experiences from the school with us in some way. I hope that we all continue to adapt and change and recognize that even if some of us are starting to shrink physically, we are always growing. I am beyond proud of all of us. Congratulations, class of 2022, for making it here today. Our hard work has finally paid off. Thank you, Kaylee. I would now like to present to Kaylee the Senate proclamation to the senior class, which reads, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends to its congratulations to the class of 2022 in recognition of your graduation from Douglas High School. Please welcome the superintendent of the Douglas Public Schools, Dr. Paul Vieira. Members of the school committee, fellow administrators, faculty and staff, families, friends, distinguished guests, and members of the class of 2022, welcome again to graduation. To the members of this class, today is your day, and it is a day of celebration, a day to celebrate your hard work, dedication, and your many accomplishments. A few months ago, Dr. Romano sent me a reminder to work on my speech for graduation. For a few weeks, I pondered what my topic would be, what theme I wanted to discuss, or what words of wisdom I wanted to share with you. On April 13th, Dr. Romano and I attended the Worcester County Superintendents Association Recognition Ceremony, where seniors from Worcester County were recognized for their excellence. Each senior had to submit a quote as part of the program. Their quotes inspired me and also delivered a powerful message. I decided to use the words and messages from your peers here today as they resonated with me and I am certain they will also resonate with you. Eleanor Roosevelt stated, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Each of you leaves the Douglas Public Schools with the skills to be successful in whatever you choose to do, whether it is college, service to our great nation, work or the trades. Set your goals and your dreams high, and you will achieve them. You are ready. Maya Angelou stated, My mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. This class has had to endure a lot these last few years. You have shown passion and compassion during this time, and you have done so with humor and style. You have a strong foundation to thrive as you take the next steps in your journey beyond Douglas. Albert Einstein stated, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. All of your teachers have taught you to be creative, made you critical thinkers, and made sure you just didn't memorize information, but you understood it and were able to manipulate it. This skill set will have you ready for whatever you decide to do next and will set you apart from others. Dr. Seuss wrote, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Our little but strong and fierce community has always supported you and wanted what is best for you. We have always encouraged you to be who you are and express yourselves. Hold on to that and don't let it go. Be proud of who you are, where you came from, and your beliefs. That will take you far in life. Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, sorry, stated, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Today is the culmination of 13 years of schooling, 13 years of hard work, 13 years of ups and downs, and 13 years of memories. These experiences over the past 13 years have helped shape who you are and given you the opportunity to learn about yourself and have you prepared to write and create the next chapter in your life. All of you are about to begin that next phase, maybe college, technical school, the military, or the workforce. Regardless of what you do or where travels and life takes you, I want you to think back 
at your time here at school. And remember that you have the skills, the foundation, and the ability to achieve at whatever you set your eyes on. We are excited to hear about your successes. Wherever your future takes you, remember this is your home and we are proud of you. Congratulations, class. Thank you, Dr. Vieira. So as a lifelong educator, I am stuck in patterns, and so we'll start by taking attendance. Um, first, I want to recognize all the veterans and first-line workers, the nurses, doctors, policemen, fire, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, for their service to the community and their country. So please stand to be recognized if you're any of those. Nothing good happens in the Douglas Public Schools without the amazing staff that we have. So if you are a teacher, para, custodian, cafeteria worker, any other staff member who helped to educate the class of 2022 at any time from pre-K through grade 12, please stand up. And finally, all of these students come to us from families who support them. We get them for six and a half hours a day. You have them the other 17 and a half hours. Thank you for sending your awesome kids to us. If you help to raise one of these grads, please stand up and be recognized. Over my five years at DHS, I have always tried to find something entertaining for my graduation speech, uh, and this year I was struggling to come up with a topic. I'm really not a good source of advice, particularly with fashion or, as Kaylee would tell you, with dating. I don't typically quote presidents. Most of my wisdom was actually acquired from Marvel movies and 1980s music. So in the past, I talked about the unluckiest people who ever lived, or finding the silver lining to crazy situations, or just something to try to come up with, uh, something engaging and interesting or funny, and well, this year I'm pulling out all the stops. This year I'm going to push things to a new level in graduation entertainment. This year I've decided to sing for you. Oh. To help me in this endeavor, Mr. Vega, will you please join me with your ukulele? <clears throat> Ready? Ready. I wish somebody would have told me, babe, someday these would be the good old days. No? No? You got something better? You got something better? Okay, okay. Uh, change of plan. Uh, instead of, of me and Mr. Vega, if you just tuned that thing, it would have been perfect. I know. Um, Instead of us, the, uh, the senior members of the high school chorus, Savannah Brito, Lauren Phelps, and Andrew Squire, will perform the song, Good Old Days, with the DHS staff band, The Hortons.
senior class who earned the highest grade point average. This year's valedictorian who will be attending Harvard University in the fall to study government is Zofia Sherrier. Good evening fellow students, teachers, faculty, family, friends, and community members. As the highs have neared their pinnacle with this graduation day, it's been a euphoric, strange, and melancholic experience for me, and I'm sure every student sitting before you today. After years of moving at full speed ahead, frantically yet passionately devoting ourselves to excelling on tests and exams, writing essays, and staying after school for countless hours for sports and clubs, the stillness and quiet of my life for the past few weeks without a regimented schedule has been deafening. When the train of your life is moving at 100 miles an hour and the brakes are suddenly employed, it forces you to stop and think. It made me reflect on what these years at Douglas High School and my 18 years spent in this town have meant to me and how the paths of our lives will begin to take shape in the coming months. It made me think about the ephemeral concept of time and how there never seems to be enough of it. There is never enough time to appreciate just how special what you have is, the little moments of your life, and the people you share these precious days with. It's never until you freeze the frame and look back that you realize those little moments actually weren't little at all but moments that have shaped us all into the people we are today. Just when we want the time to go by more swiftly, it stalls and drags its feet. Yet just when we want it to slow down, it pumps the gas. Most of us have anxiously awaited for this day and when it would finally come, but now it's here and we can't stop it. So rather than dwell on the fleeting nature of time, I would like to share my approach to embracing and flourishing in its inevitable passage. Find laughter. No matter what happens in life, things always get better, and then they get worse, and then they get better again. So being able to laugh through the peaks and valleys makes life enjoyable and much more bearable, bringing light to the dark and challenging world we live in. It's also just as important to not be afraid to laugh at yourself. 
To laugh and find the humor every day is to appreciate the moment you are living in right now, slowing down the time so you don't get completely swallowed up in its undertow. For instance, like the time we all have vividly stamped into our minds our sophomore year when Mr. Leonard pulled off an accidental disappearing act and managed to lock himself out of his own Zoom meeting, and we sat and laughed wondering what to do. <laughs> or when Mr. Stan revealed his secret love for kids bop on the bus rides to soccer games. Clichéd as it may be, laughter is the best medicine that is completely free of charge, as finding joy in the little moments makes life much more fulfilling. It's also true that the unconditional love, joy, and laughter from those around us is equally priceless. Find the people who make you laugh until your stomach hurts, and who you can glance at from across the room and burst into chaotic cackles. I'm grateful to say that I've found those people and my friends and family who I will always cherish for making me laugh hysterically and knowing I can tell them anything and they will listen instantly and support me unconditionally. Find the people who make you laugh, inspire you to be the best version of yourself, challenge you, make you question who you want to be in this world, and above all, support and love you wholeheartedly. This leads me to my next point of thanking and treasuring the people you spend your days with. Communicating how much the people in our lives mean to us and taking the time out of our days to say it lets people know that they are appreciated and not taken for granted in everything they do for us, once again slowing down the time and allowing us to cherish every moment. I would need a myriad of speeches to be able to fully express how much everyone I have crossed paths with here at Douglas High School has meant to me, but the best way I can articulate my gratitude is to simply say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. These two words can demonstrate just how much the people in your life impact you and influence you in the moments you share together. Thank you to every single person who has passed through our lives, as our moments, whether brief or at length, have undoubtedly influenced my and my fellow graduates' journeys to this mountaintop. My fellow graduates, please thank those who helped you to get to where you are today, and those instrumental in you being able to celebrate all of the hard work we have accomplished these past years. So, we've laughed with and appreciated the people we spend our time with, but even more difficult to ponder is the question of what do we do with our time? How do we invest rather than simply spend our time to find meaning and purpose in our lives? I believe Gloria Steinem was right when she said that without leaps of imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. If there's anything I've learned in my very short time on this planet, it's that if you have the courage and the tenacity to believe in yourself and know that you are capable of much more than you think, you have the ability to manifest your own destiny in whatever you want to do or be, and that dreaming, along with acting and perseverance, can truly be a vehicle to create the future you want for yourself. Don't be afraid to take the time to find the spark that ignites your passion and discover what drives you and makes you want to act. And then go after your dreams with your whole heart and everything you've got, because you can make it happen. I believe it rings true when Steve Jobs once said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Every single one of us has a purpose, and every single person has a destiny that's yours to have. Take a minute to get to know your authentic self and find it. Though this is no simple task, remember that nothing worth doing is ever easy. And remember that time is precious, so don't wait to do what you love with your life. Furthermore, I've learned that to find meaning in life is to not only manifest your dreams and go after your ambitions, but to devote yourself to loving others and serving the community around you to find true fulfillment. As I've gotten older, I've realized that when you take the time to appreciate the moments as they come, you find gratitude. And when you find gratitude, you find happiness, and you experience the most joy and purpose when you are of service to others. Now, don't worry, for those of you who are still awake, uh, I'm nearing the end of my rant. Who knew a speech about taking advantage of the time that you have would take so long? Uh, my last bits of wisdom are to look back at this amazing journey and to celebrate every moment and to appreciate the time we've spent together, as every moment in itself can be a celebration if we let it be. It's about the moments at all those stressful lip sync rehearsals when we wanted to tear our hair out even though we always pulled it off on the day of Winter Carnival. It's about the moments of procrastination in writing the scripts for winter skits. It's about those moments during the beloved mass breaks where with only a tired glance, we could communicate with one another the entire story of our day. It's about the moments in the early morning conversations with friends in the car, listening to music and trying to talk even though you're still half asleep. Although there is a fine line between living in the past and treasuring every moment. 
Don't let who you are now dictate who you can become if you set your mind to it. Remember where you came from, but do not let it deter you from where you are going. As we take our next steps into the world, utilize your power as the architect and inventor of your own destiny and future. Refuse to accept things as they are and embrace challenges in the pursuit of impacting positive change and growth in this world. Look at the uncertainty in this next phase of our lives as being synonymous with endless opportunity to find who you are and realize your purpose and find assurance in the fact that some of the best things in life are unexpected. And above all, be kind to one another as the world needs compassion and love and kindness now more than ever for a brighter future. So my fellow classmates, I am incredibly grateful for all the time we've spent together and I'm extremely proud of all of our hard work. I hope you appreciate every moment and use the time that you have to make your lives spectacular. Thank you, Sophia. The class salutatorian is the student who has the second highest cumulative grade point average in the graduating class. The class of 2022 salutatorian is Abigail Damasio, who will attend Northeastern University in the fall to study biology on a pre-med track. Good evening, everyone. It is such a great honor to stand before you today. Although today is designated as a ceremony to celebrate our academic achievements, I would like to recognize a more essential attainment. The class of 2022 has been through the most difficult past four years, surviving the Great Flood, as Kaylee mentioned, two years of COVID, and much more, all on top of the typical stresses of high school. When facing these difficulties, our class has shown great strength, resilience, and genuine character. George A. Dorsey put it best when he said, good, honest, hard-headed character is a function of the home. If the proper seed is sown there and properly nourished for a few years, it will not be easy for that plant to be uprooted. The Douglas Public Schools have acted as a second home to us for the past 13 years of our education, planting numerous seeds for our character to prosper. Beginning our educational careers in the primary and elementary schools, we were somewhat shy and nervous about the future that was in front of us. Many of us clung to our parents' sweater sleeves when they dropped us off for our first day of school. We quickly moved on to being excited to play on the playground with our new friends, and our only worry at the time was if a friend was going to give us the cheese touch. We were taught how to share our toys and say thank you to the lunch ladies after getting our meals. The biggest joy of these early years was hatching the baby chicks and growing butterflies. As we learned to care for others, our love for knowledge flourished and truly began to spread its wings. The seeds of our character were planted early on. Middle school provided the grounds for us to blossom as self-assured students. We learned how to experiment with our interests and discover what was important to us, even if that meant triggering a mass evacuation. For those of you who don't know, the Douglas Middle School hosts an annual science fair where students are encouraged to explore any topics that interest them. For my group's project, we wanted to boil cabbage and use the juice as an indicator of the acidity of different substances. But as many of you have probably already experienced, when cabbage is boiled, it gives off a very distinct sulfur smell, kind of similar to rotten eggs. Of course, our experiment caused the whole floor to reek of that awful stench, and the school staff and administration evacuated the building because of a suspected gas leak. <laughs> The whole building spent the rest of the day at the elementary school, and I'm sure all of the students appreciated that early dismissal that followed. That day, I learned that it's okay to make the whole building smell like cabbage, as long as you learn not to do it again. During our awkward middle school stages, we made plenty of mistakes like this, but they were essential to developing our interests. Middle school acted as the support themes to our growing young selves by giving us something to lean on as we became more independent. In the wild, plants must endure an abundance of different factors, such as floods soiling their roots, storms tugging them out of the soil, or wild animals nibbling on their leaves. For the class of 2022, these past four years have been a wild experience, but Douglas High School provided the nutrients we needed to grow and become strong, resilient individuals. As all of you know, we literally survived a flood. And then, 
COVID struck in our sophomore and junior years, and we engaged in online learning. By trying not to sleep through those Zoom lessons and remembering to click submit by 11.59, most of the time, we have learned to be accountable and self-sufficient as we prepare to depart from home and enter that jungle that is the adult world. We adapted to the new normal and were supplied with the wisdom to thrive as independent learners and kind-hearted adults. The past four years together in the high school have allowed us to succeed despite the rugged terrain and helped us to further explore our sense of self and develop our interests. The class of 2022 has deep roots here in Douglas. And despite the fact that we are headed off into adulthood, we are still just seedlings eager to grow and adapt to whatever life throws at us. To my friends and classmates, I hope you carry on doing what you love and continue embracing change. You are the kindest group of people I know who have a genuine, honest goodness within yourselves, and I advise you do not lose sight of that. Your character is something that deserves to be valued much more than all other accomplishments. In the future, I hope you all remember your time here at Douglas High School fondly and take great pride in how you have grown. Thank you. Learn something new. I've never heard of the cheese touch. <laughs> Thank you, Abigail. Well, and now, the reason that we are all here. Superintendent Vieira, I hereby certify that the students before you have met all state and local graduation requirements and are hereby entitled to a Douglas High School diploma. Brianna Novicki, the advisor for the class of 2022, will call the names of the graduates to come forward to receive their diplomas. Families are welcome to come forward and take pictures in front of the stage and by the arch, but please look out for the photographers and stay out of their way. Mackenzie Elizabeth Gray. Abigail Lynn Demasio. Sophia Marie Sherrier. <laughs> Joseph Michael Hennessy. Thank you. 
Olivia Ray Almeida. Lindsay May Bartolucci. <laughs> Mia Gabrielle Bomiar. Madeline Marie Benoit. <laughs> Camden Joseph Bergeron. Ryan Gregory Bernard. <laughs> Morgan Kelsey Berthium. Max Joseph Bolandrina. <laughs> Savannah Marie Frito. Brendan Michael Calkins. Ryan Robert Campo. Angel Colazzo. <laughs> Alexandra Rose Creasia. John Dariotis. Miranda Francis Digatano. Rose Delorme.
Anthony Robert DeLuca. Owen James Diot. Francisco.
David Jordan. Nicholas Stephen Canale. Connor James Kuczynski. Joseph Scott Laban. Matthew Philip Landry. Eva Noel Lopez. Daniel Bruno McGinnis. Benjamin William Markey. Dana Louise Markey. Aaliyah Ray Martinson. <laughs> Stephanie Ann McGloin. Kayla Darian Melvin. Finn Mitchell. Olivia Marie Muscatel. Samuel Kathleen Novinger. Elizabeth O'Connell.
Trevor William Oliver. <laughs> Shantae Elizabeth Pavone Savitas. Owen Collins Parker. <laughs> Julia May Payne. Marie Peliquin. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Phelps. Damien Michael Pope. <laughs> Julia Ann Fashuk. Jocelyn Mahala Richards. Isabel Marie Rendoni. Chase Allen Setzer. <laughs> Jacob Douglas Simmons. Elizabeth Slowick. <laughs> Victoria Jacqueline Slowick. Paul Andrew Smith. Woo! 
Ariana Sufida. Andrew Joseph Squire. Frederick Susan St. Laurent. <laughs> Trinity Naveev Chagru. Caitlin Emily Surratt. Brianna Nicole Taft. Josephine Rose Thomas. <laughs> Andrew James Trethaway. Jacob Jerry Triber. <laughs> Haley Ann Wagner. <laughs> Patrick. Stephen Welliver. Krista Rose West. Nicholas Keith White. Trevor Allen Wild. Nicholas Sullivan Winchell. Nicholas! <laughs> Zachary Taylor Wooden. Miss Novicki remain on the stage and will the yearbook staff please come to the stage to present the class of 2022 yearbook dedication. The class of 2022 is honored to dedicate this year's yearbook to our advisor and friend Miss Novicki 
and acknowledge her years of hard work to ensure our class's success. Ms. Novicki has selflessly dedicated herself as the class of 2022 advisor and has helped our class to plan multitudes of successful fundraisers and events. She has always been patient when our class has been less than perfect and cares so much about her students' success and well-being inside and outside the classroom, whether it be going to numerous sports games or art shows to support and encourage her students. While allowing us creative freedom, Ms. Novicki maintains order and makes sure that we are on track and diligent in everything we do. Ms. Novicki has spent countless hours staying after school with us to paint windows for Winter Carnival and decorate the gym in the stressful late hours of the night before. Even in the stress of Winter Carnival, she will go out of her way to get us pizza, gluten-free of course, <laughs> while still ensuring we are on task. She has put up with our early morning lip sync practices, which typically start 30 minutes after she gets there, even being generous enough to bring us breakfast to get through the morning. She also devoted herself to tirelessly planning to make sure our senior trip to Disney was a magical and unifying experience we would never forget. Ms. Novicki has always encouraged our class to be the best versions of ourselves and has guided and helped us as we pursue our ambitions. We are so grateful for all that she has done to support our class and all of her work and leadership to create in us an image of kindness, enthusiasm, and grace that we can be proud of as we prepare to take the next steps in our lives and futures. Thank you, Ms. Novicki. Pashuk and Kaylee Solera. Julia is attending Emerson College and Kaylee is attending UMass Amherst. Ms. Novicki will be here next year and the class of 2026 is looking for an advisor, Ms. Novicki, just in case you were looking to continue. The senior appreciation will now be presented by class secretary Anthony DeMeo, who will be attending the Mass College of Art and Design. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you everyone for coming today, especially my fellow graduates. I am glad you showed up for your own graduation. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you didn't. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2022. Every one of us has worked for this day and we have all proven that. Yet, we cannot all forget to congratulate the family, friends, teachers, and everyone else that showed up this evening. You have helped raise, motivate, and lead the class of 2022 to this very ceremony. Who else would we rely to drive us to the store at 8 p.m. for a poster for a project due at 7 a.m. the very next morning? <laughs> Throughout the years, there was no one that had our backs as much as you did. I want you to remember that even though we made it to this milestone, we are still going to be your kids. We're still going to need your help. When our cars break down, we are going to need you to help fix them. <laughs> we are going to need you to help us with our taxes. Half of us probably don't even know what a tax is. Some of us are going to need help to learn how to do our own laundry. And for the record, I can proudly say I'm not a member of that group. We're still going to need our home-cooked meals. And we're never going to stop looking up to you. Huh? We're never going to stop looking up to you for your help. And just remember, whether any of us like it or not, we are going to make mistakes and we're going to need you to be there for us to fix those mistakes. It does not matter how old we are, 18, 20, 30, 50, 100, we will always want and need your support. So while we go on our independent journeys, we will never forget where home is. We can only hope that all of you, everyone that showed up here today, remembers that you are our home and we will always need our home. Class of 2022, Today we celebrate the hard work and dedication that went into the past four years. Today we are graduates, tomorrow we are the future. We are your doctors, teachers, lawyers, plumbers, artists, future president of the United States, janitors, supervisors, and more. As we go our separate ways, don't be afraid to take risks. We conquered Douglas High School and the next step is the rest of the world. We are the generation of change, and we will never be afraid to make a difference in this world. While today is a milestone for us, it is not the end of a story. 
It is the end of a chapter, and you always need to remember the previous chapter to move forth, and we will do that while we move on to the next chapter in our lives. My fellow graduates, you gave it your all these past four years, but you're not going to stop at this high school to the diploma. Today should give you the fuel for what your future beholds. No matter where you go or what your plan in life is, you're going to go after it with determination and drive. Every one of you is going to put in the effort and you will be successful in life. So for the 100th time today, a huge congratulations to the Douglas High School's class of 2022. Anthony, I, I also wanted to acknowledge that we are adding an arts pathway to Douglas High School next year, and Anthony realized that he is that he met all the requirements, so Anthony is being awarded the very first DHS Arts Pathway recognition. So we are approaching the end of today's gathering. First, a reminder, guests who arrived via the shuttle bus, you can wait by the gate right over here, and they'll pick you back up. Uh, if you're parked at the high school, please use the path back there. Don't try to scale the hill if you're above the age of, say, 25. <laughs> and thank you very much for coming. We have one last order of business. Class President Zofia Sherrier will lead the class of 2022 for the turning of the tassels. Thank you for attending. Yeah.